Hey, if you like forestry work or you say you like to uh, work on machinery or you just want to love tub grinders, well, this is the video for you because we're going to kind of take you through the process of converting this old John Deere tub grinder into a treating machine. Currently, right now, it can't eat a tree if it tried on its best day. So we're going to convert a lot of the, this machine. Uh, I think it's kind of like a homemade type uh, somebody threw together and we're going to just fix it from the engine all the way back. And uh, we're going to make it to where it works completely functional and does what it needs to do. So stay tuned. Uh, this is part one of possibly several other videos related to this. So you can see this thing uh, com convert and see what the end game is. So stay tuned. So this is the tub grinder. Uh, the sound's obviously muted, but the engine runs, the tub turns, and the belt works. And uh, so it is a fully functioning unit, but it just needs some refinement. And that's the plan. So the backstory of why I'm undergoing this project is I bought this tub grinder in 2018 and the reason was that I was selling manure and topsoil and I thought, hey, you know, why don't I get into mulch and make my own mulch because that's where the money's at. Why should I buy it from somebody else and convert it when I'm always clearing my woods and stuff? Um, so I bought this unit thinking I was going to get an unlimited amount of chips from ch tree companies and out where I live, I was sadly mistaken. So even though I have, I'm not in the middle of the boonies, um, tree companies, a lot of people have their own land and they dump the chips and I wasn't getting the chips that I was hoping to get. So with that said, uh, I decided, you know, squash this because really what I wanted is something like a chipper that would actually eat the treetops. So this sat for a while and up till this year and I actually ran into somebody that I knew and I didn't know that his job was to work on uh, tub grinders and, and, you know, the big huge Mobark tub grinder type uh, to mulchers. Uh, to even rock crushers. So I had found somebody that has a familiarity with this type of machinery and that was the first person I actually met. So with that said, I get talked him into helping me convert my little tub grinder into something that's valuable. You know, there's a lot of tub grinders on the market and a lot of these smaller ones are basically hay busters that they basically throw round bales and they chop them up. Or they're doing exactly what I'm doing where you're just converting raw chips into uh, a mulch. And really what I want is to create something like a chipper that is useful. You know, I don't expect to take big tree stumps. And I don't ex expect to take big logs. But what I do expect to do is take branches and twigs and anything that's, you know, four or five inches and below and chew that thing up and basically turn it into mulch. And that's what I, my goal is. And hopefully this is, will be something that works for me. I can burn on my property and I do land clearing for other people. And I was thinking to myself, you know, if I had this product, this tool, you know, and I can retain my chips, you know, that generates income. So why not do this? So this is where we're at. So that's really the backstory behind why I'm going this route. And I'm going to invest probably up to $10,000 to get this thing running. But I think it may be well worth it because there's no sense in wasting it. I put about 10 grand when I bought it and I probably put a couple thousand dollars more into fuel tanks and stuff. So hopefully, um, you know, I'll get some return on my investment at some point. Now I have over 18 acres of my own property that I want to clear. And so, you know, I have a use for it, whether I use it professionally or not on the side, you know, that remains to be seen. But I do have a use for it, and I know the value of making wood mulch for myself, and it's very beneficial in my farming operation in dealing with horses. So I decided, hey, you know, why not do this? So here we are, and uh, so come with me on the journey, and I'll kind of like show you where we're at and where we're going. So somebody I know is going to ask this question or at least have it across their mind and they'll probably say, hey, why wouldn't you buy a tub grinder than when you can buy yourself a wood chipper? And if you have a wood chipper, you can chip your own stuff. Well, the downfall of a wood chipper is I have to feed every bit of logs and sticks to it. And if you ever go out and see a tree service, they always have a bunch of guys feeding it. You know, then you have to employ a bunch of people. Generally, I'm stuck working by myself and I work at my own pace. So as far as I'm concerned, I can process a bunch of logs and put a bunch of debris in piles and have it sitting out when I'm ready. Then bring in this machine and then actually feed it with a grapple and I can make it a one-man operation and that's part of it. The other part of it is the fact of, you know, I want something that can actually take a piece of material and keep grinding it down and make it a usable product. And I figured I might not make perfect mulch, but what I want with this is something that will eat uh, and break this down to a point where I can use it. So 
the reason why I'm not so uh, concerned about the size of the mulch that I'm making, as long as I'm making mulch, is that I've learned that Mother Nature and my horses, or even cattle or whatever animals that you might want to use uh, tree mulch on, um, as far as the base goes, um, is, is it's put outside in pastures and water hits it and, and rains on it and the animals defecate their manure on it, it starts to break down. So these large chips convert themselves into small chips and I have a uh, screener. So if, as long as I screen my material, I can remove the big stuff from the small stuff so I can get small particles if I want just through the screener. So the screener is more valuable than, to me than having a chipper and having this machine just so I can digest material and produce bulk quantity, this is why I went this route. Now, tub grinders are very expensive generally. You know, unless you find a piece of junk, you, you're gonna pay fifty to $100,000 or well, well above that on a tub grinder. And, uh, you know, I'm a small operation. I don't need a huge tub grinder, and I don't need something that's a 1,000 horse. This is just a 100 horse. But it's no different than having a mulcher put on a skid steer. You know, here though, I'm retaining and contain, containing my wood product so I can resell it. Whereas if you're in the woods, you're just blowing it right back into the ground and you're not going to retain it and you're not going to be able to make any money off of it. So this to me is more efficient. You know, and if you think about a skid steer uh, mulching head, you know, these mulching heads are very expensive, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, maybe even more, depending on its size. You know, I'm taking, creating a mulching head that's not even 60 inches. It's probably going to be like 36 inches, you know, no bigger than 48 inches. And it's going to be, you know, designed where it's just placed in the tub and the tub does the work. So I personally think this is the way to go. I'm gonna, we'll find out when we're done, but that's my rationale why I'm going the route I'm going. So, and again, uh, stay tuned and we'll see where this goes. So to walk you through, the first thing we do is we have a motor and it's a 4039T John Deere motor rated roughly around 102 horsepower. And that's what's controlling the unit. Uh, transmission, it needs a little bit of transmission work. The clutch system here is not working, so that has to get fixed. The drive shaft that's here is gonna be completely renovated. Uh, what I have done is I've taken this fuel tank, which is a gas for gasoline, to control that little pony motor underneath. And what that pony motor controls is not only the turning of the tub, but also controls the actual conveyor that goes up. So once that runs, the tub and the conveyor works. The motor itself, only controls the shipping unit. I also took this fuel tank off and uh, wanted having that cleaned out and redone also inside out. So at least we we're starting off with good clean tanks. That's something I've done several years ago and uh, we're in good shape. Now, as far as this engine goes, it's been running since 2018 ever, ever since I bought it and all of a sudden recently, of course, when I want to use it, something goes wrong. So this fuel pump, the standardine fuel pump Right here, it's going to be taken off and it's going to be sent out out of state and it's going to be rebuilt. Um, my mechanic believes that we're having trouble with the fuel pump and that needs to be addressed. So that's going to be going, getting out of here and getting repaired. The drive shaft itself, you can see it just was a, a single shaft to go it went all the way up into the motor block up in here. And we're going to have it where there's some safety uh, catches in there with this uh, unit that if it hits a rock or something, it's not gonna affect the engine. So this design is gonna change and uh, we'll go over that when that time comes. We'll go back up here to the belt real quick. The belt's gonna be completely replaced. Um, we're also gonna possibly change the two ends of the rollers, this end, as well as way down here. They're just old. And since I'm putting everything new on, I might as well change that too. So I wanna make sure everything's functional. I really don't wanna go back and, and mess it up. Uh, so that's where that stands. Now the one part that we're going to really be addressing is taking off this entire plate right here. This whole thing, this weekend we're going to be cutting the welds off trying to get that off and we're going to redesign it. The problem is this plate, which is up top and you can see it, it's just rusty and we have to get to the point where I can take off uh, actually the, the chopping part has to come off. So to get that off, we have to get this plate off and we're gonna be cutting that off this weekend. Like I saying, this all has to be redesigned because right now you can't actually get into uh, the grinding part where the hammers are because it's every, everything's welded in. Even the screen is welded in. So we're gonna to have to completely rip all that out and rebuild it. Uh, 
I also, uh, over time, I did put new tires on here, so at least they're beefed up, and you're able to handle the weight of this machine before they had, like, car tires, and they could barely move this thing. So they were not made. As far as the frame goes, I think somebody made this. I'm uh, pretty sure they did, so it's not any specific brand name. So we're going to probably beef this up a little bit and try to enhance it, too, so it holds well. It is a very heavy machine, um, heavy enough that I can't pull it with my dually. I tried to hook it up when I bought it, and it's just squashed my dually. So now that I have dump trucks and heavier equipment, uh, moving this around with a pinnel hitch is going to be easy peasy. So with that said, uh, I'm going to show you the hammers here in a second. So the hammers is the most important part of this unit, and this is where I'm having the hardest problem. This design is designed to basically take wood chips and break them down into mulch. That's really what it can do. It can't take out a tree. It can't take out branches. It wasn't designed to do that stuff. And, you know, for what I paid for this thing, you know, I expected more than what I got, but it's my fault because I really didn't do my homework. But with that said, right now we currently have, these are the hammers. These are the blades. And all they are is just a bunch of metal that would come down and would roll around and beat on material. And uh, what we're going to start building is some carbide cutting teeth on this thing and design it to where it'll spin and it will eat wood, sticks, and debris. It may not take huge logs, but it'll be big enough that actually I can take down limbs. Because I do firewood, I'll take the, the firewood logs off, but I want to be able to eat the limbs. To me, uh, to waste my time like feeding a chipper, I don't have time for that, nor do I have the desire. But as far as uh, feeding a tub grinder with a grapple, and I can just cut stuff to size and just shove it in and let it turn into mulch is something I really want to do. So this is the heart of the machine. This is where we're going to have to fix it. We're going to actually have to cut this whole plate off where you can see the seam. We'll probably be cutting that off this weekend. And again, I got to get this mass plate off. And we may have to restructure and resurface the steel a little bit too. But for the most part, that's where we're at. And uh, here's a shot going up the chute. It's not in too bad a shape. But like I said, the belt needs to go. And it's been torn like... I don't know, probably like six or seven times. So it's time to be replaced. So the first piece that we took off was the tub, and that allows you to actually see what's going on inside the machine. But uh, the tub itself is 10 foot from the top lip to this top lip, and the, the actual diameter inside is seven and a half foot. So that gives you a lot of room, really, to put material in and, and really start eating it up. And uh, so... We had to take this piece off, like I said, and probably not much needs to be done, but I'm going to kind of show you inside the tub, because all it is is contains the wood. This is all this thing does is keeps the material in the stationary location. So inside the tub, there's really not much to it. Basically, it just sits on a plate, and it just turns based on rollers, and it is controlled by a pony motor. And so this one has a piece of uh, metal that goes in to help stir the... Uh, material and I might actually put another one on the other side I don't know yet depending on how this thing works and uh, we'll see how it rolls but ultimately though uh, this is the main piece that had to come off and so we have something to work with so I'm on the back passenger side of this unit and there's a tire that tire actually goes up here and it sits on this hub and it's used basically to put pressure to the tub in its turning process and it's also driven by a chain uh, system and sprocket and that seems like everything there looks pretty good so we probably won't do any changes with that and as we're kind of moving up forward on the machine this machine uh, like I told you is hydraulically driven and the hydraulics seem pretty good might have to replace some hoses but this is going to be trial and error and it is bi-directional so it can go to the left or the right depending on how you want to uh, position the grinder so with that said that was pretty much an overall of this machine and what needs to be done. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video on this tub grinder project. Hopefully you stay tuned and watch the transition. Hopefully at the end it's going to be a very prolific machine. So with that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.